Welcome to Take 5, your five-minute inspirational message from Solid Rock Drogheda. My name's Nick Park, and I'm taking us through a series of five-minute lessons on how the Bible came to end up in our hands. How God's Word that was written and inspired perfectly back centuries ago in Hebrew and Greek ends up in all the languages of the world and ends up in a way that we can read it for ourselves. And we really believe that this is God's hand at work in this whole process. Now, in the days of the early church, most Christians believed that Greek was good enough as a language to read the New Testament because everybody spoke Greek. Not everybody could speak Hebrew, but pretty well everybody could speak Greek in the places where the gospel first spread. You know, whenever it's it spread around, around uh, Palestine, Israel, whenever it spread into Egypt, whenever it spread uh, into places like Philippi and Asia Minor, you know, there was loads of people speaking Greek in all these places. It was a common language, and that was something that made the spreading of the gospel uh, so quick and so easy easy in those early years. But things began to change. Over the next couple of centuries, the Roman Empire began to develop into an Eastern Empire and a Western Empire. It was too big to manage as one empire. So you had the Eastern Empire with its capital in Constantinople, modern Istanbul, and you had the Western Empire with its capital in Rome. And uh, now in the Eastern Empire, they still spoke Greek. That was no problem. But more and more in the Western Empire, people were now growing up that didn't speak Greek at all. They just spoke Latin. And, uh, and, and eventually they actually ended up with separate emperors. They would have one Roman emperor in the east in Constantinople and another Roman emperor in the Latin part of the empire in Rome. And then now, of course, you had, uh, you know, you had people in France and Spain and, and Britain that had their own languages, but most of them could also speak Latin as well, but they couldn't speak Greek. So it was necessary to translate the Bible. Now, there were various attempts at translating the Bible, the New Testament from Greek and the, and the Old Testament, of course, uh, into Latin. And some of them were not so good. You know, they, they really were not great translations, some of them. And so there was a priest named Jerome. And Jerome set himself to translate uh, the Bible into Latin and to produce a really good, accurate translation. He was in Bethlehem, the place of Jesus' birth. He was in a monastery there. And he devoted himself to translating the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament, into Latin. And he did, he did a great translation into Latin. It became known as the Vulgate, which means the common translation, because it was one that ordinary people, you didn't have to be educated in speaking Greek to understand the Bible now, but even the ordinary people, the, the vulgar people, could read the Vulgate and understand the Word of God for themselves. Now, one of the great thing about Jerome, Jerome is the one responsible for us having only 39 books in our Old Testament. Because there were, in the Greek translation, people had started adding some other books to the Old Testament or putting them in between the Old Testament and the New Testament. And you might have come across some of these books today. They're called the Apocrypha. And uh, pe people who want to create a sectarian argument about this, I've often heard them saying, well, these books were originally in the Bible, but the Protestants took them out. Well, no, it wasn't the Protestants who took them out because Protestantism didn't actually start until the 15th century at the time of Martin Luther. But actually, it was Jerome, a thousand years before there were any Protestants, Jerome, when he was trans producing his Latin translation of the Old Testament, instead of just going to the Greek, he said, I'm going to go back to the Hebrew. And actually, he got opposition from people. There were people even like Augustine said he, he shouldn't do this, you know, that the, the, uh, the, the, the Greek Old Testament was good enough. But he said, no, I don't want to produce a translation of a translation. I want to go back to the original. And so he translated from the Hebrew into the Latin. And of course, the Hebrew Old Testament just had the same 39 books we had. It didn't have the added books. It didn't have the Apocrypha. And that's why today in our Bibles, we have 39 books in the Old Testament, 27 books in the New Testament, and we don't have these apocryphal books as they are known. The reason is 
because those, those Old Testament books were the books that were in the Hebrew Old Testament, which of course was the Old Testament that Jesus used in the synagogue. When Jesus used the Old Testament in the synagogue, it was these books. So this is not something that Protestants dreamed up. A thousand years before there were any Protestants, Jerome, a biblical scholar, a priest in a monastery in Bethlehem, understood and I believe he was very right to understand and that's why his translation had such influence that he wanted to pass on so anyone could read the word of God, the God-inspired books of the Old Testament scriptures and the God-inspired books of the New Testament scriptures. And so very few of us today of course would speak Latin but no matter what language and what translation we're using, we can be thankful to Jerome because it was through his translation into Latin that we have the correct books in our Old Testament and don't have these extra books added as well. May God bless you today and I'd invite you to join us again next time for another Take 5, your five-minute inspirational message from Solid Rock Drogheda.